Okie dokie. I think it's test drive time. I'm uh, I'm thoroughly, thoroughly looking forward to this actually. Um, just been for a burn offshore around a little island just out here. We are in Sydney's beautiful pit water. Spring is here. The weather is amazing. And this thing is quite special. Uh, it's actually blown me away just as much as the T11, which I've already done a walkthrough of. And I feel like this boat has some serious potential. I, I think this has got, to me, it's got Riviera 3000 offshore of the future. So that's, for those of you that don't know, that's a boat that was built incredibly well, caters to young families. It's got a little bit of accommodation, a toilet, very capable, lasts incredibly well in our conditions, our Australian conditions, and they've just always been in demand because it's a sort of boat that um, you can do lots of things really well on. And the feeling that I'm getting with this Nimbus T9 is you can do even more. You can do even more. It, it's, it's so easy to operate. It's so capable through the water. Um, thanks to that air steps, the deep V hull, the cutting bow. But it's not, it's not like a lot of the other adventure boats out there. We are going for a heavier displacement, a heavier build. And from the little spin I did, admittedly, I sit on the dunny when I do these drone shoots. So I'm downstairs just feeling the hull. I don't actually uh, get to experience this. So this is my first experience of being up here and seeing what this is all about. So you will discover it along with me. But you feel that extra weight um, so it's, it's got sports boat characteristics, but it feels more yacht-like. I, I don't know, if is that the right way to describe it? Well, it, whatever it is, that's the way I've described it. it it's, you could feel that displacement coming through the waves, um, and it's noticeable. And geez, this thing's well built. So yeah, this, this is gonna be exciting. So anyway, um, we are just left beautiful Basin, which is a um, perfect place for Sydney lockdown, as uh, half the northern beaches seems to be here today. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of a burn around the inshore uh, part of the pit water here, um, let the guys on the camera boat try and um, capture some shots from the camera boat, and then we're going to take it offshore, and uh, I'll talk to you about what I experience whilst we do that. Before we get there, um, let's talk about the ergonomics at the helm, because this, this is special. Um, this is the X edition. So this has got the sexy T-top, this has got the timber flooring, this upholstery is clearly, I assume this is upgraded upholstery, but it's bloody nice. But um, just to explain what's going on here, I have adjustable seats. So the adjustment is here. Wow, that goes forward and aft, super easy. Jeez, no effort whatsoever. The, the armrest is like solid stainless steel backed. Um, so it's very, very good quality. I don't know if there's any up and down. No, it's just forward and back. But from a standing position, I'm 5'7", I've got clear visibility everywhere. This rail is not hindering my visibility whatsoever. So I guess if you were taller than me, you'd be looking over. Um, if I sit on the bolster, so if, when I'm sitting, yeah, I guess I've just got the rail in my line of sight. No, sorry, I don't, because it's above the horizon. And then if I put the bolster down and I sit, now I'm locked in. This this feels very, very jet-like with the windscreen coming around, and really these these pillars don't provide any hindrance to my visibility. So that's good, and so you can also tell. Well, I could before the strength and rigidity they they provide to this T-top because that thing doesn't move. So so armrests, yeah, that's comfortable. Back support, excellent. Width on the seat, really good too. It's got the short man footrest, so I'm always happy to see that. Um, and the helm, geez. Just like that T11, she's nice, but now we've got all these suede finishes. So um, this is, must be like a macro suede gray going around here, and then a matte gray plastic finish um, around the rest of the dash. And that's going to be really good for visibility. But the other thing that I'm noticing whilst I'm here, you know, it's, it's a re relatively hot day, 25, 27 degrees today, and the sun's starting to get a little bit of bite. 
Um, this tea top, it's, it's a glass or a Perspex tea top. It's the tinting, whatever they're using, it's definitely UV capable because it knocks the heat load down considerably when you come in under here. So whilst when I saw it on the brochure and when I saw it for real, I thought, oh, okay, is that gonna get hot uh, underneath that tea top? The answer is no, it's, it's providing a definite cut down on that UV, um, which is good to see. From an operational perspective, um, the wheel just here is a beautiful wheel. All this chrome inlay, I've got the Nimbus logo, I've got the suede stitching, it is adjustable. Um, oh, that's cool. So you actually have a wireless phone charging spot underneath the helm, fantastic. And then you have another charging area just in front. We'll cover that in the walkthrough. I'm just talking about the driving for now. It's, sorry, it's got a little bit excited. So this is comfortable, this is comfortable, the throttle base is on a good angle and I can reach that comfortably from a seated or standing position. I'm going to start by standing and I've got my bow thruster underneath my throttle so that sort of makes sense because if I'm manoeuvring the boat I can do that and that's all in, within reach but I also have this uh, remote control so if I was going to collect a mooring by myself and uh, couldn't work it out and missed you can always do a little adjustment there and our zip wake is on the port side so what we shall do is get the boat up and moving now before I get her on the plane, I'll talk to you about the engine options and this whole form and the weight of the boat. So she's 2,800 kilograms um, empty. And I've got a 300 horsepower Mercury V8. That's a naturally aspirated. I love, 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 love those engines. They're so good on fuel consumption. They sound great. They're just all good things. So if you have an option to go for one of those, do it. Um, but the options for engines on this particular model you can do twin 225s i do see some people maybe desiring that that setup because twin engine redundancy if you're the sort of person who wants to do some offshore cruising um, transiting and you just feel good about that twin engine redundancy that makes sense maneuverability don't know we'll find out she seems to track really easy and straight so far so i don't know whether that's a, a necessary thing for the advantage it gives you um, but the horsepower rating is up to 450. So you can put a Mercury 450 race on this thing, um, so which will be blindingly fast. So, um, you know, we'll see. Um, my engine trim at the moment is all the way down. As I said, the 300 Merc. In terms of fuel, I've got about 100 litres on board of about the 300 litre capacity. Few bags, couple of anchors, not much else. Apart from that, it's mostly an empty boat. So. I'll get the boat moving. My SOG is here. Where's my revs? There it is. And so off the plane at uh, SOG, I'm on kilometers an hour, 12 kilometers an hour, and 1800 revs, not making much in the way of waves. Let's bring that up just until we get to something that's going to be unacceptable. About there. So 16 kilometers and 2,700 RPM. You can just feel she wants to get up and go. So, and that's what you do in a boat like this. So I've got engine trim down. I'm just gonna wind that power through the rev range. 4,200, 4,500. And I'm gonna give it a little bit of, I'm just gonna play with the engine trim because I can see the wash is forward. It's gonna get a little bit of trim there. Okay, 4,600. 48 kilometers an hour. And that feels smooth. This, this is a comfortable commuter. So I'm just gonna take it through a wide sweeping turn here. I'm at 4,600 revs. I got 53 kilometers an hour on the clock. And I'm just gonna see if I can come through and catch the camera boat so they can get a couple of shots at me. And before we take this thing out to see. So we got, Conditions wise, I'm inshore at the moment. We're on flat water. I've probably got 10 knots of northerly wind. Um, and unlike trim tabs, which you'll see me operating on many of my other videos, I've got the zip wakes on today. And the zip wakes, they are in auto. So 
lunges. Gonna race up and catch our camera boat, let him get a few shots. Oh yeah, so the extra weight of this hull on pickup, on acceleration, it's not sluggish. You think because it's a heavier boat compared to some of its competition that it might be, it's just not. I don't know what the answer to that is. Why would that be? If someone knows, please tell me. Um, but she's parting her way through the waves. The windscreen is dry and has remained so compared to, con sorry, considering we've already been offshore. And we'll see what happens. The wind is gradually increasing. I'm just gonna give the boys a bit of a shot here. And then I think, because they're just on the little old bar crusher, we're gonna have to leave them because they can't keep up with our little 200 horsepower. Alrighty. So I'm gonna give it an engine, a couple of, couple of degrees of engine trim up. Yeah, okay, this, this 300 is very well suited to this boat. It's not underpowered. We're, we're just scooting along at 56 kilometers an hour here. Um, this is really easy cruising. The boat's tracking beautifully straight. I've, I've got very minimal input or consideration from me, the driver, so I can look around and make sure that my sight lines are all clear, that I'm not gonna run into anyone because I'm nowhere near full revs. I'm sitting on 4,700 revs here. So this is a, a safe and controllable speed. And it, this is just telling me this is a boat that you could commute. This is a boat that you can widen your horizons. This is a boat that you can not worry about the weather condition or the sea state like some of your other boats where that's much more of a consideration. I'm just, we're entering a little bit of ocean swell here and some wind chop, not much. She's just dry. It's just dry. Okay, let's go out in the ocean. We'll hook our way up towards Baron Joey and then we'll fang it around Lion Island and I'll do a couple of turns offshore. I've just got moderate sea swell coming in in a bit of a northeasterly direction, um, plus some wind chop. And I'm gonna go into it here and I'll increase my speed. So the only sort of trim adjustment apart from having my zip wakes on auto, and I can see them giving me minute adjustments from here and there, is I've done a couple of degrees of engine trim up. That's all. I don't know why, but I just feel like the hull wants that. I'm gonna do engine trim down now. Yeah, and I can, I can see that wash going forward. It's cutting into the waves a little bit more, but I just don't feel it's all that necessary because I've got 5,200 revs on the gauge. I've got 62 kilometers an hour on my SOG, and I'm going through a couple little waves here. Totally dry over the bow. Totally dry. You know, many boats, a couple of waves, you would expect. Look at that. The flared section is just sending the wash out, sending it out. Here's a nice good one. What's that? What's gonna happen here? I'm hitting that 45 kilometers an hour dry. Interesting. So the, the cutting bow section does its job, and then the flare at the top, which you would have seen on our T11 video if you haven't subscribed. It's sending it all out this way and it's ending up just there. And so far, see, no, no water on the macro suede at the back seat. So all your mates can be sitting back there. You're going upwind into what is now some offshore conditions. I've buried the nose a little bit to smooth the ride out and everybody's comfortable. So let's speed it up. We're now getting we're borderline 20 knots of breeze out here as we head offshore. I can see some white caps. So I'm just gonna sit on this for a little bit. 
because this is where the weight is speaking to me. Just feel this thing. It's it's solid. So if that 2,800 kilograms plus fuel and motor, it's just it's just parting through the wash more like a big boat. Now, I've got the characteristics of an adventure boat, but I've got the feeling of a big boat. Look at this, I'm not even holding the wheel. And I'm, we are now going through considerable chop. I wish I had my drone up for this because it's now considerably windier than an hour ago when we were doing the droning. But this is, this is cool. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go across these waves and just see how she behaves. So, look at that. The seat's still dry. That's interesting. There's just 20 knots here. Wow, that's the flare again. That's, this is really interesting. Okay, so let's go downwind. I feel comfortable and safe. Engine trim down. Zip wakes. They are doing a little bit of auto roll here and there, and now I'll give it a little bit of engine trim up. So I'm doing that at 4,100 revs. I've got 46 kilometers an hour through choppy water. Choppy water. And wow. Wow, this is this is good. Like this is do whatever whatever you want for the day. Because conditions like this, this is like your typical windy summer afternoon when it does kick up. And this is what stops people going somewhere in the first place, or it slows you down on your way home, or everyone just gets bloody wet. Okay, I've got a few drops on the starboard aft cushion. The wind is coming from the northeast, so it's coming over this way, but the rest of the cushion is dry. And if I'm smart, you just drive downwind and you don't put yourself through those scenarios. Wow, that, this weight's really making a difference. Okay, let's power the boat up a little bit. That works fantastically well. Fantastically. Is that a word? What is now? Now I'm going to sit down. Yeah. Visibility is great. The bow has stayed pretty much level through all the rev range and various accelerating and decelerating. I'm in. Okay, a couple little drops in, but that was a decent one we dropped off. I'm in choppy water here, and this thing is eating it up. Let's speed her up a little bit. What we're gonna do, we'll go downwind, and then we're gonna take it back inshore, and I'm gonna really put it through its paces. I'll wind her up to wide open throttle, see how it feels, and see what our top speed is. But that's just proved to me that this is a boat, as I said before, you would widen your horizons, your area of operations is huge with something like this, and your guest comfort back here is going to be exceptional, because I'm incredibly comfortable, I've got very little, if any, vertical up and down through these waves, there's no slamming, and it's maintaining the wash, the wash is being pushed out to the side and we are staying dry. So, okay, 5,000, actually I'll bring it back a little bit. I'll do a proper speed test. I'll start at 4,000. So, 4,000 revs, I think you would consider to be a slow and comfortable cruise on this boat. You're on the plane, you're doing 43 kilometers an hour, and that's comfortable. Yeah, yeah, you could you could do this with grandma and nobody's gonna be upset. So that's a slow cruise. Let's just then wind it up. I wish I did have knots 
I'm so used to not, but we're talking kilometres today anyway. Wind it up to 4,500, 4,900, and let's just take it, take it up to 490, it feels like 49, 48, 49 feels like the fast cruise there. I've done, I've just left that one or two degrees of engine trim up there and we're getting 57 kilometers an hour at 4,800 to 4,900. That feels like the fast cruise. Now let's give it some wide open throttle. Pushing through 5.5, 5.4, 5.5, 5, 5, 6. Now I feel like she wants a little bit of engine trim up. 5.7, 5.8. Little bit of engine trim up at 5.7, 5.9, 5.9.50. Nine, yeah, come on, six grand, six grand. Woohoo! Yeehaw! This is good. So at this speed, nothing's rattling. The boat is controllable. I'm doing 75 kilometers an hour. And everything seems dry, safe, and in control. So, can this have the bigger horsepower? You betcha. You betcha. This thing's built for it. No worries if you want that 450. So if you're a speed demon, this boat can handle it. If you're a cruiser, 300, you're still gonna be exceptionally happy with that. And if you're a Mr. Redundancy, I need redundancy, redundancy, get the twins. So that's cool. Let's um, let's just stay at this fast speed and just take it through some of these turns. feel like this is the sort of boat that you try and do burnouts on because you're gonna have you're gonna have friends you're gonna have lunch we got multiple fridges on this thing it's a I feel like this is a boat you go places stay dry remain comfortable have an awesome day but since we're here we might as well do a burnout okay engine down <laughs> hook it in. Okay, I feel the back just wanting to go a little bit on the super tight turn, so I'll just widen that up a little bit. But it's a very gentle and in control. It's not like my ski boat where you just lose the ass and you can fall out of the damn thing. Let's go back the other way. That's a very gentle, controllable motion there. So, let's take it up to speed and hook it around. Yeah. Woohoo! This is fun. Yeah. Okay, so... Like I suspected, you do... It's like a cruiser with sports boat characteristics. That's what this boat is. It's going to get you to where you want to go quick. It's going to do those sporty manoeuvres. It's not the sportiest boat on the harbour because it's not trying to be. It doesn't want to be. It wants to be safe, comfortable, dry. It wants to be the boat that you keep for 10 years, not for two years. And I think it's going to do that. I think it really is going to do that.